Okay, let me uh, come over here and introduce uh, the panelists we have for this section, uh, the challenges to manufacturers in China. Uh, we have uh, Alan Chan, who's the uh, Chief Financial Officer of uh, Highway Holdings, uh, just over on the far side, a company that does uh, electronic uh, manufacturing for uh, a wide variety of goods, including uh, white goods and many others as well. Uh, next to him, we have uh, Robert Lee, uh, who's uh, the General Committee Member and Chairman of the IT and Electronics Subcommittee of the Hong Kong Exporters Association. He's also Chairman of Fit Profit Trading Company Limited, uh, Ming Chung Sun, who we just had to, uh, uh, speaking next to him, and of course uh, Darius next to me as well here. Um, we're a little shorter on the panel discussion uh, potentially here, so I'm going to open it to the floor uh, quite quickly today. But I do just want to get some points, particularly from uh, uh, from Alan and Robert, on the challenges that are out there. In the first half of this morning, we heard uh, about some of the strategies companies are trying to employ. Uh, and we did at that uh, one point during that discussion talk about the big risks out there as well. We heard about uh, demand potentially not coming through at the pace that it's required to from Darius. We've heard about an asset bubble which then bursts uh, from Ming Chun. What are your thoughts about the big challenges out there right now for manufacturers? Actually, we are the OEM, you know, uh, doing the traditional uh, metal and plastics and uh, this kind of business. And it's the segment that we uh, suffer the most under this environment. So what we uh, do to, uh, to facing this, all this problem, labor shortage, uh, we don't have uh, much OEM product uh, the, on design. And a couple of years ago already, you know, we have taken a different strategy on the increasing the a technology design in our product. Just for example, that uh, metal parts combined with uh, plastic, a little bit on electrical devices to become a semi product. At the same time, that uh, we know that the OEM traditional OEM business cannot be a you know a way for the, you know to bring the company a step. So, a few years ago, actually we already you know to invest and get the German technologies, and to form a JV. Uh, to bring in the know-how, the German know-how, and we do the, our own manufacturing automation machine, which is a, our own brand. This is our, you know, still uh, the project that will be cater, you know, to transform that OEM business to uh, uh, have our own our business, you know, to, 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 pro, to promote in the market. And the third strategy is that uh, we're 100% export uh, company, which is, you know, you know that we're, we're we have uh, we haven't have chance for the local market though so, so that's why we also in the process in a few years ago to target some local company Chinese company they will like have to you know uh, also with our company to have uh, to go to international because the less the status at the same time we would like to capture to do a uh, business the local business with them so that we have a different kind of strategies actually like uh, most of manufacturing in China to definitely to have gone through the transformations Otherwise, that they are facing the, all this uh, low end, you know, the product and low design, you know, and low brand name and labor shortage, increase the operating costs and all the things that I think these couple of things that we are we actually in the field that we are doing this. And are you seeing positive results or is it too early at the moment? Yep. Too early. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Come back next year and tell us uh, how it's going. Um, and, and Robert Lee as well. The, the, the same question, really, in the sense that uh, both for your own company or as a representative of uh, IT and electronics exporters. How, how are they doing? What are they saying to you? I think basically, uh, in the last five years, most of the manufacturing in Hong Kong, they are very, very uh, careful because of the uh, changes. Uh, today, the competitors in Hong Kong uh, mostly is the China enterprise because in the capital wise they are very very big much bigger than any uh, one company in Hong Kong but uh, they're doing more or less the same kind of product and number two is uh, in Hong Kong uh, the population is only 7.5 million but compared with China the consumer market is so huge that means all the manufacturers in Hong Kong, the product they make, they cannot have a market in Hong Kong because it is not big enough. But in China, their own consumer market is a very huge market. And also they can pretest 
their market before they export to the world. So it is a different world. That's why you can see most of the manufacturer, either they go to the north or go to China to set up their own business and aim for the China market. Or uh, they have to uh, diverse. But one good thing is uh, Hong Kong is still in a very good uh, position because most of the electronic technology, the trend of the market is come from uh, the world and they gather together in Hong Kong. The reason is because Hong Kong have a very long history, have a very good connection with foreign country and also most important is the technology, a lot of consumer buyer, they first come to Hong Kong looking for the OEM factory because they can do a very good job. They have experience. They can also set up their big factory in China. With that connection, they can deliver and they can make sure the quality, the delivery is good. So now, most factories, they're changing from just a low-end OEM factory or low-end product. Now, gradually, they become more mature. So, in the market today, you can see iPhone, iPad, they're changing. They're changing so quickly because Hong Kong also have do a lot of uh, performance, improvement, and also quality-wise, design-wise, on those products. So Hong Kong also have a lot of uh, success in this area. And in the coming few years, you can see the PC, the computer, the phone, uh, they are changing very quickly. From big size, from very heavy equipment, I think in the next few years, you can see most people will carry their phone into their pocket, but with the function of a PC, with a lot of uh, other features, communication, GPS, whatever you think they put together. The reason is they have two choice. One is they put the monitor into a flexible one, they can fold together, put into their pocket. Number two is they can change the monitor to be a projector. And this projector, they can use it in any kind of environment and make it as the size of a normal monitor. So that it's so convenient, so easy to demonstrate, so easy to use. So I think the world is changing uh, because of the information, because of the IT, because of the technology. So Hong Kong still have a position to survive, but because it is a sudden change, of China and also uh, the capital wise. In the beginning, Hong Kong is still very difficult to get finance. But in the last three years, I think a lot of big fan company, they come to Hong Kong looking for good joint venture partner and invest in it. So I think in the coming one or two years, you can see, uh, especially in, in the science part of Hong Kong, there are more than 600 new companies with new technology and also with a new joint venture. Those will be a success also. So I think there is still some uh, good future for Hong Kong. And uh, on that note, Alan, uh, one for you. Uh, the, the, on that uh, digivote we just did there, the, the biggest concern was actually the renminbi. So appreciating Chinese currency against the US dollar yes. and therefore against the Hong Kong dollar for the foreseeable future. Yes. Is that having a, a substantial impact on your business or businesses that you uh, work with? Yes, definitely. As an as a OEM uh, manufacturer, actually you can name every day we are fighting for this increase in operating costs, mm -hmm. uh, especially the minimum wages. So that's why you know, we are actually have to go through the transformation. It's not only we talk about earlier, it's also actually the whole company, even the management style, the people mindset, you know, and management systems. 
And this kind also have to go through this kind of uh, changes. Otherwise, we just cannot, you know, facing that uh, because uh, we got so many uh, factors and uh, disadvantages, and uh, we are caught in the middle. Cannot pass the, you know, the cost to the customer on the one hand, and we suffer, you know, from the other hand. So, so, so efficiency and improve that, you know, uh, production technologies, and they have to be, you know, there. You know, otherwise we we cannot survive anymore. Okay, so external factors are forcing Hong Kong companies to become world class effectively. Yeah, I, I want to open it to the floor here, particularly this side of the room, which didn't ask any questions in the first half. Uh, but uh, again, please, uh, if, uh, we'd like you to identify yourself, but if you don't want to, that's fine. But please uh, say who you want to address your question to. Any questions on the subject of the challenges facing uh, Asian companies at the moment, particularly Hong Kong companies? I'm sure there will be. I'm sure they're out there. No questions at all? Come on, I know. All right, well, have a think about it, and we'll come back to uh, some more points uh, in a moment. Um, I, I want to bring one in myself from my own area of expertise, if you can call it that, at uh, Bloomberg at the moment, which is uh, energy. Uh, I'm an energy editor at Bloomberg, and uh, there's a lot of talk in the markets at the moment about demand destruction because of high oil prices. Uh, and that's not exclusive to any particular country. We've seen, uh, uh, we've seen plenty of complaints in the US. We've seen uh, truckers in Shanghai uh, blocking the streets because they're upset about fuel prices. We see this kind of thing uh, all over the world. And the question is, is that demand dest destruction actually starting to hurt companies? Uh, take a macroeconomic view, first of all, if we can. Uh, Sun Ming Chun? Um, very briefly, I would say definitely it's uh, actually cutting the purchasing power of households and as well as, uh, I would say, the, the raising the cost of production. Um, uh, but on the other hand, I think uh, it's something I do think is needed. Otherwise, as I mentioned, you know, we are using up this energy too fast, mm -hmm. especially from these, uh, uh, these developing economies. I think they are growing so fast in terms of uh, incremental demand. So we need high prices to make them be more efficient, is what you're saying, effectively. Darius? Um, well, it, it is a big challenge uh, for the consumer. It's a big challenge for the producer. Uh, obviously, Asian uh, consumers are sheltered to a, a substantial degree by subsidies from their governments, right? So as long as those subsidies remain high, uh, the impact of global energy prices is rising will not be as big either on inflation or on consumption, but it will be large on fiscal positions of the governments. So you have the question of which government can actually afford it. And on the, on the production side, well, if there is too much government subsidies or price controls, then we will get a situation like we have now in China, where there is uh, power shortages because producers just don't want to lose any more money on their activities, right? So, so it is something that will, one way or the other, hurt uh, Asian economies. And we can only hope that the near-term outlook for oil prices, which is uh, Credit Agricole view, is actually that they will go further down. Mm -hmm. And this would solve a lot of these problems. 